Blake showed up. I wanted to see some cool stuff over here. Never Let's... seen a bear pond. It's just perfect. Listen, I think you had the harder build. Making something bear proof that was is a little difficult. Let's get this bear pond started. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. I am coming to you from Jupiter Farms, Florida, Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, and I am here with Amy Kite. She is the director of this amazing facility. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I met you a couple of years ago at Cannons, and then we got reconnected again about a year ago, and I remember coming here and it was dirt. Yeah, it was nothing. <laughs> I cannot believe <laughs> what you have done. Yeah. Unreal. I know. We just we had to do it. You know, we've been renters for many years. We wanted to build our own place, and here we are now. You guys are just making it better. It is an honor for us to be associated with you. You have an incredible reputation in the industry. So anytime we could work with an organization like yours and we could lend a hand, we have our expertise and we love animals. Greg Whitstock founded the company because of his love of turtles. I have my degree in zoology because of my love of animals and nature in general. So now what we want to do is try to give back. Looking forward to working with you on bears and otters. Right. You have no <laughs> idea how excited we are. We've had these temporary ponds while uh -huh. we we're waiting for you guys to get down here. You know, these animals are all rescued and we want to give them the best that we can and okay. that's you guys. We'll start with bears. How long okay. have you had the two bears, Taya and Kiona? Taya and Kiona, and yeah. And they were rescues? They were rescues out of, up by Orlando area, okay. a city called Apopka. Okay. So they're teenagers now. They've been with us since they were young. Oh, wow. Um, unfortunately, mom had taught them when they were very young just how to get into garbage cans uh, and people's pools and get yep. into garages. And so the state of Florida deemed them too much of a safety threat to okay. live out in the wild. Got and it. they offered them up for exhibits somewhere in education and mm -hmm. we took them in they've been with us ever since oh my gosh incredible i mean it's definitely it's right up my alley and we want to create something that's unique for them florida black bear what habitat are they most happy in are they kind of on the edges of some of the swampy areas they and are that type of thing? they are definitely you'll find them in the ocala national forest you'll okay. find them down in the everglades so they're really highly adaptable wow. and so that's why we're, we're just excited their old water feature at our old location was just a four foot deep and as they've gotten older they don't feel as comfortable in there so we noticed they weren't using it more. So that's why having you guys here and doing something that's a little bit more of a gradual yeah. incline, I think yep. they're really going to enjoy it. And Excellent. I think it's actually going to be like therapy for their old bones. We do have a few concerns, obviously. The strength of the animal. I know you said you had some rock here on site. We do. And big ones. Yes. We got and very lucky to get nice. those from a landscaping place that was going out of business. So we're like, we'll take it all. <laughs> that's perfect. Because we will definitely need those big boulders. And I believe you said you had logs and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think those came down from the clearing. Yeah. We, it's actually from, right from the, the site property. here. You know, as we were building this, some of the trees got affected, you know, the root mm -hmm. system and everything. So we just kept them on site for, yep. you know, when you guys got here. Well, that's perfect because we love recycling. Fortunately, I hate to say it. I mean, it's like a cliche. We have a crazy tight time frame. Not only for us, but for you, because you have a massive, like a huge <laughs> event coming at the end of the week. We do. We have our annual largest <laughs> fundraiser every year. Of I think we have enough people coming out. This will be part of our winter retreat. So we're going to have a lot of contractors coming in from around the country. And even a couple coming in from the UK. No and they're way. totally excited about coming here because they are animal lovers as well. And they're going to be an incredible addition to that this That is team. so awesome. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to it. Let's get this bear pond started. We're making great progress here on the bear project. Everything's moving forward, obviously, with the otter, block wall going in place, jets are getting installed, but now we've switched over to make things happen over on this side. Super, super fast with excavation. Tons of room inside of here, making quick work of everything. We hit the inevitable. We are here in South Florida, and we hit groundwater. I knew it was gonna happen at some point. We lucked out on the front, no issues, but we do have it down here. So it's starting to saturate up, but what we wanna do is get the liner in place, start getting some of the rocks in position as well, because I don't want the sand walls to actually start collapsing so what's happening is we have this vertical wall and water seeping in from the very very bottom of the wall and what happens is that sand becomes liquefied and it starts oozing out from the bottom now you have an unsupported wall of sand that's just kind of clinging onto the side that stuff starts slumping off and it starts dropping down in the bottom if that starts happening behind everything it's going to set us back because then we'll have to pull back the liner and the fabric and all that stuff to fix it so i want to keep moving forward as quickly as possible getting the liner in place and then we can start setting some of those 
rocks. Brian and Josh and Jack have hopped into action and we're installing the biofalls as well. Remember what the biofalls is, start of a waterfall, but it's also the biological filtration. That's gonna have all those little microorganisms living inside of the filter media, which is gonna to help to detoxify the water. And it's gonna give us the desired water quality that we're looking for. We're trying to make the maintenance as low as possible. We will have a drainage system going all the way out over to the outside perimeter of the fence. So this way the keepers could come in and periodically open that valve, back flush the filter, and it's gonna remove any of the solids and sediments outside of the bio filter. If you start clogging up the filter media with sand and sediment and debris, it's gonna suffocate the nitrifying bacteria that are important for the health of the water. So that periodic removal of that material in this application is gonna be very, very beneficial, and it's gonna give us the desired water quality, which is always number one anytime we're working. If it's in a backyard, if it's for birds, if it's for koi fish, if it's for goldfish, if it's for bears, it's otters, tapirs, you name it, I wanna make sure that I'm creating healthy water the way nature intended. Bricks inside of a pond, paving bricks actually, paving stones. You normally don't see us use these too often inside, but the reason we're using them, we're recycling. Be a planeteer, recycle. Plain and simple. So once we got here on site, we met with Amy and Kristen, and we started walking around at different things, and they had pallets of these blocks sitting around, left over from their previous location. And they said, if we have any application whatsoever, and we could use them, take them, because they didn't know what to do with them. Well, what I'm using them for is actually to fill void space to create this walkway for the bears to go down. What I love about it is it's gonna give us the structural integrity that we're looking for. I could have put crushed stone in here, but when you take a 300 pound bear and he starts walking around, He's gonna have his PSI. He's got massive paws, but a 300 pound animal putting all of his pressure down, it's gonna push that crushed gravel around. He can't push these bricks. It is gonna be less surface area compared to river rock, but what's gonna be happening back behind these logs because we're not gonna have flow. Remember, we have our jets and stuff. We have our waterfall coming in from the other area. We will have a bioturbation. The bear's walking over the top, so they're gonna kinda agitate the gravel bed a little bit, but these bricks are a foot thick, so we have multiple layers. The water in this back area is gonna become anoxic. So that means there's no oxygen available. So what's gonna happen, instead of having nitrifying bacteria and things like that, which are aerobic, we're gonna get anaerobic bacteria, which I know is a no-no to a lot of people. They freak out when you say there's anaerobic stuff living inside there. You could get some parasites and you could get some nematodes and roundworms and stuff like that. But under anaerobic conditions, we are taking nitrate, which is the byproduct of the nitrification process of the nitrogen cycle. We end up with nitrate, green plants, algae, that type of stuff can utilize that. The other way to utilize nitrate is under anaerobic conditions, we're gonna go from nitrate into nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is basically what makes our sky blue. It's because there's nitrogen in the atmosphere. The majority of our atmosphere is actually nitrogen gas. So there's this constant maneuvering and it's a continuum. We're taking nitrogen out of the atmosphere and it's going into our plants. It's animals are eating it during the recycling process. It goes back into nitrogen gas. So we're constantly playing around with this big giant game. So again, I don't mind having anaerobic areas. I don't want a lot of them, but strategic locations actually is beneficial and it mimics nature. Biomimicry, I can't say it enough. I said it 100,000 times. We are mimicking natural ecosystems. And in a natural ecosystem, you 100% will get anaerobic pockets. We just don't want it everywhere. The other thing is nobody's gonna stir it up. So when people say they could be problematic, it's usually when you have this anaerobic zone and then all of a sudden something comes in and agitates that. And it could release gases and acids into the water. But these are gonna be locked away. Nothing's ever gonna get to this area. So it's actually gonna be very safe and it's not going to cause us any issues and it's going to help to complete that cycle.
Look who we got here. What's up, what's up? how you doing? <laughs> Blake showed up. We have done many, many projects with Blake over at the Bear Ranch and made the trip north. Yeah. Checking out some stuff. I wanted to see some cool stuff over here. Awesome. Never let's, seen a bear pond. Let's, oh, this is gonna be insane. I've yeah. never built a bear pond, which is go. what I was excited about. That's awesome. Blake, we just checked out the bears inside. Yes, what do you sir. think of the new pool over here? Like for I him? said, you said plunge pool, I said a hot tub. <laughs> but I mean, it's gonna be really cool to see the bears inside of here, hanging out, enjoying this instead of a big tub, more natural. Building rock instead of plastic, so it's yeah. a lot better. I agree. We had to lock all the big boulders together because yeah. uh, these well, bears are big, but not huge, but yeah. still, if they start pulling around on stuff, oh, yeah. it's gotta be locked in. And we exactly. also used some of the concrete cloth. I saw that down there. Down yeah. there in that deep section, yeah, yeah. just so if they're Perfect. walking around. I don't think they're gonna be digging around on the bottom, I don't but. Think so just in case. But. And as you can see around the enclosure, they're not really rooting or anything, so I don't think they'll mess with it. Awesome. All right, man. I All appreciate right. you coming by, bud. Of course. Good nice seeing you, man. All right. Be good. <laughs> Look forward to the next project. Oh, yeah. Out of Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. Let's do it. We're on the final push for the bear pond right here at Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. We just drained all the water out of the pond. Remember yesterday we had that hydrostatic pressure filling up, filled up halfway last night to get more weight on top of the liner to push that water back into the subsoil. It did the job. The problem is the concrete cloth actually cured. So now we actually have some little ripples in that concrete cloth, still somewhat malleable. So Josh is doing his best to put that stuff back in place so we can keep moving forward and filling the pond with water because I want to have it operational by mid-afternoon. We have our liner in place. We are staging all of our large boulders and we're going to start working on the waterfall as well as the edging. Finishing up with the landscaping, we'll have a fully functioning system in the next few hours. Chaos. Every project different. Every single one of them. Gotta love it. The last stretch looks good. I think the bear is gonna be so happy. There is nothing that could be yeah. better. Yeah. It's just perfect. I'm speechless. I mean, you know, any nerves that I had before, <laughs> gone. Completely gone. Ed, how do you make a uh, biofall bear proof? <laughs> Billy. <laughs> if it's Billy proof, it's bear proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all we got to do. Yep. Yeah, so all we're going to do is we're just going to dig around, bury some logs, put one log over the top, put some lag screws down that, anchor it in, and then uh, when we have to remove the filters, we'll take the lag screws out, and then it should be bear proof. Bear proof. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta check this out. We just got the bear feature running. Now we're gonna get the otter pond going. So definitely check out Team Aquascape because they have been focusing 100% of their effort on that amazing feature. I tell you what, I was part of it in the very beginning, but the final components all came together and it looks insane. Let's check it out. Ed, this is awesome. <laughs> you know what, in the very beginning, I was a little jealous because you got to do a pond for bears and I got you know these little cute otters <laughs> that are really mean, I guess. But listen, I think you had the harder build. No, like this... making something bear proof that was is a challenge. little difficult that was the yeah. biggest challenge that we had here we had a little bit easier than you because our posts and stuff I were agree. further apart yes higher roof yes. <laughs> yes but by far the biggest challenge that we had was making it bear proof all massive boulders down on the bottom and everything you know how we lock stuff together yeah just kind of interlocking everything so if they start pulling that stuff they're going to be resisting all the rocks instead of one because that bear could easily move that rock yes. like easily easily but if it bearing against another uh, one and uh, another several one and another exactly one. then it's all good. So when I was back here, the part I was like, oh my gosh, this is what's really slowing them down was the stairs coming in. Yeah, the stairs worked out really, really well. Using those logs, we were able to create a series of interlocking steps, very naturalistic. So just crisscross of logs and then bolting them in place. One of them right there, you can yep. see it's cut away. 
we had to cut it because it was a little too high and it was going to yep. kind of block up yeah, yeah. water a little so we were like just hack it out of there so we ended up cutting it out which makes a big big difference but as you see from all the trainers that's how they got in they yeah. walk in and out all right the way down here. into that bottom section yeah i love the waterfalls i think my favorite part of the waterfalls is there's that really cool twist in it you got yep. these two giant rocks they piece together really nice every rock you had to use had to be giant though yep. you can't really come in here with a bunch of basketball sized rocks no so every rock you have is a big 500 to 1,000, 1,500 pound rock. Yeah, exactly. And we lucked out with those ones up there just because that water worn type of a look that they have and the way they interlock together kind of created that little bit of a sweep to it. It's not a great view from way over there, but the sound. The sound is going to draw in. Yeah, exactly. And then the most difficult part you had was how do we make a biofalls bear proof? Yeah, exactly. And so maybe not the nicest, <laughs> most aesthetically pleasing area, no. but really when you're out here, you don't even pay attention to No, them. you really don't. And I think maybe they could add a few more cobblestones or rocks if sure. they wanted to on top of it. But yeah, coming in with a steel grate over the top, bolting it down with another big log with big 12 inch screws Banging going down. Rebar, rebar down going in there. In there. It's pretty yeah. solid. I think, I think you have a bear proof pond, right? <laughs> I sure and, hope so. And here's here's what I remember. There was two blue tubs here before. There were, exactly. Right? So at the end of the day, it's nicer than two blue tubs. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Then the addition of some of the plants around it, just to kind of make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Again, I know this is a new facility. It's going to have to take time to grow in. Yep. I know their old place was like in a jungle. So now I, I know they're looking forward to getting these plants to mature. They're not sure how the bears are going to handle some of them. We tried to position them next to poles, you know, some of those trees, so they're not going to walk into them easily. But in the end, if they want to go somewhere, they're, they're, they're pretty gonna, much going to yeah, do it. They can it. do whatever they want to do, right? Do well, Ed, I think we've got some eager people behind us we that are one. like, release the prayers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on All out right. of here. Amy, I have been designing and building water features for 31 years now. I have done not hundreds of projects at zoos, but I've done quite a few. Most of my stuff is residential, commercial, etc. But it's very interesting to me as an animal person. You know, I go into zoos and I and I see a lot of the similar type of construction methods that have just been around forever. Yeah. Standardized construction, you take a concrete shell of some sort, holds water, you have a recirculating system, you drain it and clean it on a periodic basis. And I know that you have those here. We just created something different for you so I, I can't wait for you to, to actually live with it for I a know. little bit Me too. <laughs> so you could actually experience it and give us feedback and let us know how it works and how it doesn't work because then we can tweak it and we can continue learning so every job I do I'm an eternal student so I love learning something I mean when something goes bad that's unfortunately you learn a lot from those lessons oh, absolutely. so we want to implement that stuff but I, I see you have a new feature going in and I mean it looks like a traditional swimming pool to me basically, basically yeah but this is for pool. our water birds okay what yeah. type of birds are you gonna have? Uh, uh, pelicans, geese, ducks, terns, okay. cormorants, and hingas, things of that nature. Okay, pretty messy. Yes. <laughs> Beyond pretty messy. Yes. And some deep divers, so I see yes. you're going down deep, so well, you yeah. have a pretty good... Yeah, we're going down at least four feet, wow. which we need for any time we get white pelicans. In. Okay, got it. No, what's interesting to me though, like when I was talking to engineering firms, I do lots of talks and I work with architects and things, and I still see a lot of traditional water features being built, and I think there is a little bit of a shift. What we built, again, it's they're, they're two different things. I don't want to compare them oh, they're together. They're totally different. They're just totally different, different applications. But I, I think from a design standpoint, even though there's challenges, I prefer working with a flexible membrane, 20-year mm -hmm. warranty on it, but it could manipulate shorelines a little bit easier. A little bit more of that naturalistic look, which is really what we specialize in. So I know that's kind of our thing, but it depends on each and every project. Yeah. I know you do have water features for, obviously for every animal here, I'm yeah. assuming, right? And different volumes of water as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yeah. Depending on what their natural needs are yep. and, and what is also required Required by based on the permitting that we have. Okay. Okay, that totally makes sense. Now for a smaller water feature, are those basically just a drain and fill type thing? For the most part, do you or have even filters some of them. On them or we no? do have filters on some of them. Okay. Like what we did was we did some prefabricated things. Okay. We had to get in here pretty quickly. Yep. So, you know, by the time we had the enclosures up and the landscaping going in, we were kind of behind the gun a little bit. So we were trying to get all our water features in. Yep. And so we did some prefab stuff. Some of them are just sump pump, scrub 
clean out yeah. and, and refill. And then others yeah. we do have a, a traditional pool filter okay. system on them. Okay, awesome. I'm glad we got to work with the otters and bears. I know. Um, Cause I know they love water. So to do something again, interactive, where I think it's a little bit more mimicking that riparian zone. I, I love doing that type of stuff. And the, and the great part about it for us, we're, we're really excited. Mm -hmm. We actually want to do every year, we are open to the public seven days a week, okay. except for a few holidays. And we do over 600 free programs to the public about our animals, about the environment we share with them. And your structures are going to give us the opportunity to really kind of tell them how this mimic mm -hmm. what a natural ecosystem behaves mm -hmm. like and how you can create habitat for true wildlife that are out in the wild yeah. in their own backyard yeah. and what you would need to do such a thing. Gotcha. And so we're really excited to actually add this in as part of our educational program Perfect. where, you know, this is how the Everglades work. This yeah. is how your, your STAs <laughs> work. This is how the wetlands, the watersheds work. And so it gives us another opportunity to really teach people. I never thought we could have these structures. Right. And now to see all in action <laughs> um, and be like, okay, you're in on Monday and out on Friday right, and yeah. it's done. Yes. And that it is something that is actually, you know, way more cost effective than I ever knew. I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm a little shy. I'm a little embarrassed, but it's the truth. And I think yeah. more people need to understand that. I, I, I agree. I take it upon myself to work more with architects and engineers to start finding the right mix. And again, there's going to be always be applications and needs for different types and different methods of construction, and it's going to work. But for those opportunities where we can create something naturalistic, you definitely got to give us a call back. I, I already know. So our most beloved animal, of course, everybody loves the otters. Everybody loves yeah. the bears, but we have a duck. Okay. And his name is Stu. Okay. And Stu the whistling duck is <laughs> oh our number gosh. one fan favorite oh because gosh. he interacts with everybody. You oh whistle, he whistles back. He sells more shirts, more mugs, more stickers. And so the whole staff's already like, when are we going to build Stu something? And I'm like, all right, guys, I'll work on it. Okay. And what I would love for down here, again, for thought right now, you have tons of roof spaces. I love doing stormwater management projects. We could do a catchment system where we could pre filter the water, capture it, hold it, reuse that captured water for irrigation, for animals, etc. Have that overflow into a rain garden. Next week? Cool stuff. I think I'm ready. Okay, yeah, let's do it. That's fine. <laughs> well, it has been a pleasure. Oh, thank you so, so much. So much fun. You're welcome. So much. Bear Pond is officially open.